representing the respondent, the Board of Education. The issue in this case is whether a single sex school that has successfully helped address a crisis in education of NYC's lower income young women is substantially related to an important governmental interest and is therefore constitutional under the 14th Amendment. Research has shown that a single gender model of education is extremely beneficial to female students. A recent study of all girls schools across the nation found that nearly every girl, regardless of her ability or socioeconomic status, performed better in single sex classrooms than in co -ed ones. Studies show that when boys are in a classroom with girls, girls are far less participatory and as a result, and, and, and as a result girls learn less and lose confidence in their abilities. In contrast, girls who attend single sex education schools have stronger self-esteem, greater self and greater self-confidence and higher career aspirations than their counterparts in co-ed schools. Windsor's Women's School embodies all of these great characteristics. On top of that, the school has been incredibly successful. It has much higher rates of attendance, graduation, and college acceptance rates than any other New York schools and has already won many awards. The standard that applies when a state makes a classification based on gender is intermediate scrutiny. In order to pass intermediate scrutiny, a law needs to have only an important state objective and it must substantially be related to that goal. In our case, the school has the important ob objective of addressing an educational crisis in which many studies show lower income women to be suffering the most. The reason for the suffering, the, the, the reason for offering the same sex schools for women is that research has shown that boys and girls learn differently and thus need to be accommodated differently in order to perform better. By having a single sex school that has a curriculum specially geared for women, the Board of Education is creating an institution in which women succeed and thrive in society. This is not only substantially related to a governmental purpose, but, but it is also successful in addressing it. Studies have shown that women are shortchanged in public schools and again are suffering the most in this crisis. This, what this school offers would be an alternative solution. In Mississippi University for Women, this court has said, quote, a gender-based classification favoring one sex can be justified if it, in, if it intentionally and directly assists members of that sex that is disproportionately burdened. In our case, we have plenty of evidence to show that women are disproportionately burdened. There is a crisis facing minority females in New York. There is an increase in teenage pregnancy drug and alcohol use, high school dropout rates, low self-esteem, and adolescent obesity. Also, less than 28% of women pursue careers in math and science. Among minorities, that statistic is just 12%. Experts believe that this may be because girls in co-ed schools are not encouraged toward math and science fields based on stereotypes and intimidation by their male peers. It may also be because girls are simply discriminated against in co-ed schools. Research shows that male students are more likely to be challenged in class. Our case is also distinguishable from Garrett v. Board of Education, which is not binding on this court either way. Because in that case, there was no evidence that the co-ed system was failing urban males in particular. There were no findings that met the defendant's burden of showing how the exclusion of females from the academies was necessary to combat unemployment, dropout, and homicide rates among urban males. Thus, it failed to show how sex-based classification was substantially related to important governmental objectives. Our case is also distinguishable from U.S. versus Virginia. In that case, VMI's distinctive decision was to produce, quote, citizen soldiers. There was nothing to show that discriminating against women actually served that goal. Here, the school addresses the unique challenges for women brought upon the educational crisis. Women in New York are facing a crisis in education. They are doing significantly worse than men. Here, we have a school which exceeded all of its expectations and is actually working. Instead of trying to close schools like this, we need to try to create more of them. Your Honors, we ask the court to rule, um, to affirm the decision of the lower court and declare the school constitutional. Five minutes of questions. So you stated that uh, the crisis or the reason for the creation of WWS was in part because of obesity, um, a high high school dropout rate, and teen pregnancy. 
Um, aren't those issues that face both men and women, or both you know high school girls and boys, comparable to the Garrett case? Um, they may face girls and boys, but in particular, they face um, those those things are faced by girls, as as, as presented in the fact pattern. I see. So, do you think somehow that having a single sex classroom uh, benefits girls uh, on those issues? Um, uh, it it definitely benefits those um, on those issues because um, single sex schools, um, just by its nature and also by the way they implement their policies, they are geared um, to to help women. But but mainly, of course, what it helps is I mean in, in education because we know that such large statistics and, and such a large percentage of them went to um, pre med colleges and a lot of them are succeeding in math and science as opposed when they're in co-ed schools with boys and girls. So what would be the remedy for uh, justice in this case, um, the boy who wants to attend the WWS? Um, the fact of the matter is that this school is a single sex education school and the whole reason that it was created was because using all the statistics and data that they had, they saw that women were facing a crisis in, in education. This crisis was an, um, the crisis was an important objective to solve and was substantially related to that goal because of all the evidence that was presented. So they made this school in order to solve this crisis and by letting Justice Gordon in, that's in a way defeating the purpose of the school because then that means that other boys can also attend the school. And we have statistics that show that boys and girls, when they attend a co-ed school, that girls do worse when they're, when they're with boys than when they're apart. So you, why can't you just have separate classrooms in the same school? Um, you, you can't have separate classrooms in the school because still that means that boys are going to the school. And we still have statistics that when boys and girls are in the same school, that, um, that girls are doing worse. They're not doing worse only in education. They're doing worse in other parts, um, some, such as you presented, such as teenage pregnancy and stuff like that. And by having boys in that school, that's defeating the purpose. And we know that this school has been very successful by the methods that it has used. But until you have a comparable boys' school, um, isn't the state only providing a single sex education opportunity only to one gender? Well, again, the fact of the matter is that, um, is that girls are having a crisis in education. It's the, it's, it's the girls who are having the biggest crisis in, in, in this educational system. And actually research shows that boys do better than girls in co-ed schools. And in order to solve this crisis, which is an important objective, which is also substantially related to that objective, because of all the evidence that we have, this law is legal. And, and actually, um, in, in a Mississippi University for Women, it said that, quote, a gender-based classification favoring one sex can be justified if it intentionally and directly assists members of that sex that is disproportionately burdened. And we know that the women, in our case, are disproportionately burdened because of all the evidence that we have. We know that less than 20% of them are, are, are pursuing fields like math and science. I see. So what is your opinion then of BBS as an alternative for males? Excuse me? Your opinion of, of BBS, the, the all-boys school that's being contemplated, what is your opinion of BBS as an alternative for students like Justin? Um, well, BBS would be a school that justice can go and, and BBS is completely constitutional. It's not a remedy for the school because this school is completely constitutional by what it's doing. So, if, so when this school we built, justice, um, justice can go there, but it's not a remedy because this school already is constitutional. Uh, Counselor, didn't the school also say that women were naturally proficient in math and science? Didn't, they, didn't the court hold in Bogan that facing uh, policies on such gender stereotypes is uh, unconstitutional? Well, again, the main thing that we, have, that we have to focus on is all the evidence that we have. And using this evidence, WWS, um, WWS opened the school, and it has been very successful using its methods um, to, um, uh, and, and getting these people into, into colleges. And, and, and the majority of people went to pre-med colleges, they went to math and science fields, which they were, which they were not good in before. And um, again, it's important to point out that you know, even even if um, the school thought that it would, thought um, that it was naturally deficient, you know, they were wrong.
because this school has been successful at what it's doing in math and science. These students in this school have been successful. If we give they will thrive in society, and they did, and this school is evidence of that.